Hi everybody, my name is Scott McGill, and today I'd like to discuss um, uh, some hexatonic patterns, in particular one that's found in Nicholas Lenemsky's Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Patterns, the number six pattern in the first chapter, and I'm taking it actually from a 12-tone set of Arnold Schoenberg from his Opus 24, the Serenade, the Movement 5, and I've just completed a paper on that that I've put on academia.edu as well if you're interested in having a look. Um, so let's look at the hexachord itself and discuss how we can get the maximum benefit out of it or a lot of permutations that, that could be musical, of musical use for us as improvisers, jazz or fusion, you know, or otherwise, okay? So the first hexachord, the first pattern, the most basic, uh, we're going to do it on A. I'm, again, I'm taking this from the Schoenberg set. He starts it on A. So this would be A, B flat, C, D sharp, E, and F sharp. That simple. It sort of has that sharp nine sound a little bit, you know. Um, so what we're going to do is look at different permutations and different ways that we can get uh, some real mileage out of this pattern. Uh, and it looks fairly simple, you know, for the for guitarists, it's simply one, two, and four on the guitar, moving up by augmented fourths. And even just that pattern, as you can see, can you know you can be musical with that. There's no reason why you can't, you know. You know, there's different rhythmic. You know. Okay, so with those six notes, let's look at some different devices that we can use to uh, make some more music out of them. Okay, and the first thing I would look at is starting the pattern on a different note, and I think that's a, a good. A, a good rule of thumb for this Lenemsky book in particular if you're working through that, okay? So instead of starting on A, instead of A, B flat, C, D sharp, E, F sharp, let's start on the B flat. So start on B flat, play the same pattern, but B flat, C, leave off the low A. B flat, C, D sharp, E, F sharp, that's nice. It's a pattern of five and it fits really well under the fingers. And it, 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 it works well with bop kind of phrasing. And especially with some technique. And it works for... And it has sort of a diminished sound on B flat. Here, that's like a diminished major seven. Or, or dominant, right? On, on C, you know, on A, on uh, E flat. That's nice in E flat. Seven flat nine, right? So that's a nice way of looking at it. And again, with that fingering, nice ascending fingers. Sort of as a burst. Okay, so that there's your C, C. You can see it's a C7. Hear it? It has that. Has that I've got an F sharp over a C there. Okay, now let's expand that even further by transposing it. So if you, obviously, if you want to make it a diminished pattern, and it's part of a diminished scale, what's nice about this is it's part of a diminished scale, okay? So it would be this. You can hear it. It's, so if we move this pattern by minor thirds, So any lick that we did with that, we can do in minor thirds. So I just did, moved it down three frets.
kind of sounds like the Coltrane lick. The uh, only it has a few notes. It sounds really nice. <laughs> And that can go across or down the guitar. You know, you could play it. You know, it could really help the string cross it. It's really great, really. And in tritones, just, you know, to cover a lot of ground, you can. So it's gonna cover your E flat altered, your C, your A, your F sharp, or your G flat, as well as diminished on B flat, right? You know, that could even start it on C, start on E flat, F sharp. So, even just that as a gesture is kind of cool too. That sounds really great. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Okay, so that's the first one, just the first pattern, starting on A. And let's look at a different fingering before we leave that one entirely. Watch this. So if you have this and you want to transpose it or rather get it into a different fingering as well, you can look at a couple of different options that will help you play it in position. For instance, so say we have this. Okay, now that's part of, so that was F sharp, E, D sharp, uh, C, B, flat, and now say we want the extra A without using this, that fingering, we can go, we just grab it there. What a, what a musical fingering. Resolves nice to the A flat, right? Really great, that's a very musical fingering. And then take that in minor thirds. It's a good ascending line. Well, you can really get some mustard on that. So I played it on C. Then I played on F sharp, right, and then E flat, and then A. You can work your way up the neck, you know, take it across the string. Resolve to F, okay? So the next one is a rotation. So in other words, instead of A, B flat, C, D sharp, E, F sharp, we're gonna start on B flat again, but we're gonna do the whole thing. How about B flat, C, D sharp, Right? E, F sharp, A. You notice they're all symmetrical. Right? Right? Well, even that sounds good. Boy, that sounds kind of nice, too. It's a big stretch, so watch it, <laughs> okay? But it looks like a pentatonic, doesn't it? Right? Now here's what I'm going to do with that one. Watch this. I'm gonna add another finger underneath. So I'm gonna go, okay, from the scale, from the hexachord, obviously, A, F sharp, E, and then I'm gonna add an, an E flat or D sharp underneath. So that's... Right? That's really nice. And then move it in minor thirds. And then start it, instead of on E, start on C sharp. B flat. G. Right. 
that's neat. You know, this is your Stravinsky chord, right? Sounds really neat. A big stretch. We can even add another one under there. So instead of just E flat, we can add the C. So good for the legatos, right? Add the picking. So same business. I mean, this can... Move it minor thirds. Sounds fantastic and a good technical challenge, especially on the higher strings. It fits nice. Really great there, really sounds. You hear that? The A7. Okay. So that's the B flat. We're not quite done it yet though. Since it has a pentatonic profile, we can play it like a pentatonic. Watch this. B flat C E flat or D sharp and then E F sharp A. And now you can add a lower note. So why don't we add the A below it? A really nice rhythmic feel. So that would be A, B flat, C, D sharp. And then moving it up in augmented fourth, D sharp, E, F sharp, A. And again, getting the fingerings, you know, changing the fingerings around, watch this, to get the transpositions. We can move it in minor thirds now, so. So I said, start on A, start on C, E flat, F sharp, A. Oh man, that sounds great. You know, that's really. Sounds fantastic, you know, especially if it was in a 2 5 or something, you know. Sounds great, it's so like an E minor 7, right? And then A. And now watch this, I'll change the fingering as well. So we'll transpose it. And then I'm playing D sharp, C, B flat, and A. So I've got a complete statement. And it's so great, I mean, it works right under the fingers. Right? Play it in thirds. And it's just wonderful. So just like the first one, you know, doing the, the different fingering. So now you get... Okay. The next one starts on C. So the last one will start on C. C, D sharp, and E. And obviously up a tritone to F sharp, A, and B flat. So like a one, three, and a four stretch. That works really nicely. So even, you know, that way, even with that basic fingering, it can swing, it can sound really nice, you know. Now I'm gonna add the lower notes. So here's F sharp, A and B flat. I'm gonna add a D sharp and an E underneath. And then A, B flat, C, D sharp and E. Going up a tritone. And of 
course, now this can go in minor thirds too. So I'll start it on A. I'll start it on F sharp. E flat. C. Yeah. So that's really neat too. Gives you a nice diminished sound without sounding too obviously diminished. And again, this you can add the lower notes as well, so watch. You know. So. That sounds really, really good. And just a few more quick notes on some of the other patterns. Like for instance, if to, to get you into this one a little more, you can change it to two per string. Watch this. So instead of F sharp, A, and B flat, it could be F sharp, A, B flat, and then add a C. That's nice. So you're kind of chopping up this. It's a little bit of this, that pattern, but that sounds great. F sharp, A, B flat, and C. Moving it in tritones, as per, see how they all, when we go back, it all sounds like that. That's how we know we're on the right track. Down in minor thirds, tritone. Minor thirds sounds really great, great diminished sequence. So, um, starting on the, the B flat, you know, and then the C sharp. So start on D sharp, C sharp, C, A, C, uh, excuse me, F sharp, E, D sharp, and C, so on. That's, that's really a nice pattern. And you can add the upper ones, you know. So you can... There's one where it just... You can skip the the A, and that's another Slonimsky pattern. I believe that's number two. So it's yeah. Again, back. Oh. And here's the other one. Okay. So I hope you found those useful. And again. I think that's a great way to work through the book is, is to don't, not just take the patterns at face value, rotate them. In other words, if it's, we'll rotate the thing and then start on the next note, start on the next note. Find notes that are lower, that where you don't have to state the whole pattern. To, see, to, to state the whole pattern, you don't have to do it in one burst. You can do it, you know, over the transposition. In other words, for instance, this first pattern, didn't have the whole hexachord, it didn't have an A. But when we played it a tritone below, the listener got the A. So it, it, in other words, you don't need to state it all, to me anyway, you don't need to state it uh, all in one pattern, say the whole thing in a full pattern. You don't really need to do that. Um, there are ways to do that, obviously. You know, we looked at some of them, but the fragments were just as uh, interesting. You know, even this, when we did this one. Just as interesting, just as technically challenging. Um, the other thing, again, is, is the, the fingering schemes. Experiment. Don't just take the pattern at face value. Manipulate it. Get a fingering together. You know, even if you liked this, even if you said, look, I like A, B flat, C, D sharp, and E. You know, you don't have to go, you don't have to do that. I mean, that's a very easy fingering. That's four notes of it, and that collects the other. And then transpose it. You know. Still sounds great for a sharp nine chord. And then you can always figure out ways of it. That's nice. 
Mm, I didn't even consider that one. How about this? C sharp to C, A, F sharp, and B flat. Wow, that's really, that, that sounds great. That's a, that's a really great way to, to state that pattern. Wow. I like that. <laughs> well, that really sounds great for the F sharp. Really neat. So, I hope that helped. Um, I offer Skype instruction, and of course I go through all of these, uh, you know, I, I'm familiar with the, this Lenemski book, very familiar with it. Uh, I studied with a gentleman named Dennis Sandoli, who was one of the people that introduced it to Coltrane and Pat Martino, musicians like that. So Mr. Sandoli was very ahead of his time. I studied with him for 10 years. He was one of the first, I think, to use the book or introduce these sorts of things to jazz musicians back in the 40s and 50s. So... Uh, if you're interested in customized Skype uh, music instruction, please contact me on my Facebook page or go to scottmcgillguitar.com, S-C-O-T-T-M-C-G-I-L-L-G-U-I-T-A-R.com. And I hope this was enjoyable. And again, check out the paper, um, Schoenberg meets Slonimsky. <laughs> okay, and that's on academia.edu and give that a read and, and let me know what your thoughts are on it. And I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you again.